Welcome to Intro to Linux. I am your host, Daniel Lowry, and in today's episode, joining me is one Ross Brunson to help us do that very thing. Ross, welcome to the show. What are we going to learn today? We're going to talk about Linux mostly from the standpoint of you may have encountered it, you may have seen it, but you may not be using it that much. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a good question. Like, if I'm coming from a Windows shop, I guess, and I'm now being, oh, maybe you want to use some Linux, the big question is why? Why? I've got Windows. It works. Why am I moving to this Linux business? Yeah, a lot of reasons. Yeah. So one of the things that we really want to talk about is, there, for many years there, people had a question about, are we going to use Linux or not? It was mm -hmm. the year of the Linux desktop for about 11 years, yeah. something like that. And then we know we're not going to do that um, because it just didn't happen that way. But on the server market, Linux has really become dominant. And it kind of happened in stealth mode. For a while there, Microsoft was given uh, Linux as, you know, as an industry a hard time, and then it was quiet. And then suddenly one year we realized, hey, I think we won. So when you look at even Azure, yep. the cloud, you know, the, the, all the rest of uh, Google Cloud and uh, Amazon, everybody else is using primarily Linux. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, uh, the reason why people do that is because of the licensing fees. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Microsoft's licensing fees and the way they've traditionally done this, it's fairly expensive to run those operating systems at scale. Got to pay, uh, pay the big red machine, right? Exactly, exactly. And so the other thing that, that makes a big deal out of this, although Microsoft has made some advances in this, is Linux can be slimmed down to just the tiniest mm. sliver that actually does the task. So, for example, I'm if I'm running Nginx as a web server and I just have a few files, I can put that down to you know sub 384k. Kind of thing. Right, and where can, a Windows installation is going to run you at least 60 gigs of, of hard stuff. drive space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to well, get crazy, I mean, right? You yeah. can slim it down, but yeah. it's you know it's really an exercise in you know taking the planer and shaving the, yeah. the bottom yeah. of the door. You know, so it's really important to understand the economies of scale and what mm -hmm. people are doing these days. And because of that fact, now all of a sudden I can put hundreds, maybe thousands, of Linux virtual machines, little tiny ones. And when they go away, if it crashes or whatever, we just simply make more. So, so. ease of use, super scalability when it comes in the server market is it's just dominating that because it's so great for yep. that. And, and so that's the kind of the, the empirical underlying stuff that's there. But because of the economies of scale and everybody working with Amazon and Google Cloud and Azure, what you have is this need for Linux skills as a foundational level. Gotcha. And so if people get the foundational Linux skills, then of course they're going to, I always tell people it's like a hand, right? Yeah. So this is Linux skills here, and you might go off into databases, you might go off into the high-end virtualization, you might print and file, things like that. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But, yeah. but you also might be somebody who's working for Industrial Light and Magic and you're using Maya, but you might also be somebody who's you know, using Maya and running a huge render farm. Right. All right, well, that's a, that's a great start. Uh, what else would we want to know about why we would be interested or need to use Linux? Well, one of those is kind of the hacker ethos. And when we say hacker, we say hacker in the right way. Which right, is, the uh, traditional form of hacker of, I, I like to just hack things together. Exactly, I like to take things apart. Tinker. And, you know, yeah. every, every kid who's ever taken apart an important electronic component to their parents' dismay and horror. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, uh, that's me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, Been there? <laughs> slayer of alarm clocks, that's <laughs> yes. me. Uh, Telephones <laughs> right. were very, very yeah. dangerous. No toasters, me. though, because yeah. those are those are Those kill you. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is that 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 desire to get into things and play with things and, right. and really just discover what's going on. Um, there was a, an application not too long ago that got bought by um, Apple, and the inventor of the application said the reason why he did the application is because when he was a kid, he used to just go through the settings dialogues of everything mm. and just discover all the settings everywhere. And I'm just like, yeah, I remember doing that. You know, and then after a while you can't keep up. But, oh, no. but it's just that concept of I have a curious mind. I want to see how things work. And if you can understand how things work, oftentimes you can change them for the better. And so that's another important thing about Linux is you can change it. Uh -huh. You actually you don't have to petition Microsoft at one of the uh -huh. user conferences. You can actually go and do it yourself if you have the skills. That's right. I love that whole open source community. It's mm -hmm. one of the things that drew me into Linux as well yeah. was I can go in there, I can make it the way I like it, customize it to my specifications, mm -hmm. and then my workflow gets a whole lot easier because I know exactly how that machine's going to perform because mm -hmm. it does it the way I want it to do it. Right. So it's really cool that way. Anything yeah. else you want to add before and we uh, call this a show? You know, get a good job. The ching right? ching. The right? open source workforce, I like to call it. Uh, I've been doing a, a lot of you know a lot of talks at shows and things like that, and especially uh, you know LinkedIn has a great uh, advice network, that sort of thing, and just making sure that people are able to go out and get good jobs and get a better job. And a lot of times, if you're in the Windows workforce or your company has a little bit of Linux, if you have Linux skills, 
and a new project comes up or they, when they buy something or whatever, you can be the one who says, hey, I know that. And you can actually get a cool new project or even a new job. All right. Well, there's some great reasons right there for why you would want to use Linux. We're going to look mm -hmm. at more and other th sundry things about Linux operating system as we move through this little course here. So join us back for those. As for this episode, thanks for watching.